Well, <laughs> hello. It's me. It's me, Jake. It's 3 p.m. live in California. As promised, I'm here. And you can see I'm wearing my polar bear on a leash by a penguin t-shirt, uh, signifying my relationship with uh, Lady Jerry, who is not here today. I mean, she's here. She's not here. She's not here. She wanted me to move the car so she could get out of the driveway, but there wasn't a spot on the street. So she's going to wait until after the show to leave. But why isn't she here on the show? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it has to do with... I, th I think it has... To, I think it's me. It's not you. It's me. It's not you. Um, but I don't know what I've done, which is often the case um, in marriage. I don't know what I've done. In fact, it's very possible that I haven't done anything. Um, it just could be... Something's wrong. Uh, so I don't know if the notifications went out today. I'll be curious to see. Um, but I do see that there's some peeps here. Oh, who's here? Jen is here. Greetings today. See, Kevin. Howdy doody. Happy Friday, Flavia. And uh, yeah, Jeff, happy fun Friday, Rachel. Yes, hello, hello. You're on a stand-up paddleboard day. Man, you're doing it all. You're sitting down and paddling. You're standing up and paddling. All is well. Joan, greetings. Um, you like the black and white, uh, Flavia? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's it's fun to be in a little bit of a <laughs> weird sketch drawing, but I might have to turn that off. Ed, greetings to you in, in uh, Oakland. And Stephanie, hello to you. I hope Brad is there as well. Um, you got a notice today, Bob. Good greetings. Keith Robinson, yes, salutations. Uh, you're... You're on a sit-down couch folding clothes. Well, that's a good thing to do. Uma, good to see you and Keys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take off this magic um, filter because we've we've done it. People people seen that. Now they can see me and I can see you. Uma, Keys is driving. Wow, you guys are doing it in a car. Um, I've done it in a car, but it's been a while. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know what's happening today. Today, Well, it's Friday happy hour. Christella was not, uh, we didn't schedule it because uh, it was just going to be too weird. I think Lady Jerry has some idea of something that we are going to be doing later. My daughter's got a new book. So yesterday, was it before the show? I put together the desk and then after the show, I put together the bookshelf. So uh, our daughter's got a new desk and bookshelf for her room. And uh, we've got that all squared away. Maybe I'm going to try and do the show with the glasses off for a minute, see if I can still read, because then, then I won't get the recording, the reflections. You do still see them in the background, but I'm working. I'm working on it. I can't. No, I need them. I like it. Rich Greenies. No, Ed, not Ikea. Some other company called... Uh, I'm just going to try and look and see if I can... S oh, I can't. It was a different company, but similar... Similar, you have to put it together. It comes in a box. <laughs> Dave, you watched Lady Jerry's YouTube video and saw that she said that she's friends with David Byrne. Well, I think she's friends with David Byrne like we're all friends with David Byrne. Um, <laughs> so I hope that answers your questions. She's not really friends with David Byrne. Um, is it a proper British fry up? No, it's Friday up. Fry up Friday. Fry up Friday. Um, but I do love a I do love a fry up for breakfast. Man, when I first got married, that's what that's all, all I had. But today, uh, after the show, I've got some leftover Chipotle from the other day that I'm gonna have. That's how glamorous my life is. And what am I looking down at? Well, it's this bicycle map. Now I got this prior to um getting the bike, but it's this is a West Coast bicycle um trails to go all the way from Vancouver to uh, Seattle or uh, is, does it go all the way or does it maybe it just goes from here LA down to uh, to uh, San Diego rather not Seattle not Seattle um, but I'm I'm afraid that's gonna I'm gonna have to ride on some busier streets in order to do this journey it's complicated you would think there would be an app for this uh, that I wouldn't have to figure this out on my own Rich, you love the weather. You love the weather. You mowed your, <laughs> mowed your lawn Sunday, shoveled your sidewalk Wednesday, and mowed your lawn when you got home from work today. Wow, You're, it's all over the place there. Um, but you do have to love it. 
Space alien looks happy. Um, yeah, he is happy. He's got a little. He's got a little grin on his face. I mean, <laughs> they love the anal probe. We don't like the anal probe. They love it. Um, and that's one thing I know. Oh, and I'm going to surprise Lady Cherry with this. Is I got these new, our new laundry. This is the packet that the uh, laundry soap comes in, and you open it up, and it's in this uh, these little boxes, and inside the box are pre-measured little packets of wash. And so the idea is you're not using up a whole um, plastic bottle and everything. Uh, we'll see if Lady Jerry loves it or if she doesn't love it. So I'm now I'm now subscribing to laundry detergent. Yep, I'm subscribing to razors. I'm subscribing to laundry detergents. I didn't subscribe to underwear, but I have bought some underwear on the internet. Um, Ed, one of your biggest disappointments uh, was not seeing Talking Heads live. Yeah, you've seen David Byrne individually a couple of times. I bet that would be great. I would have loved to have seen Talking Heads, but I wasn't really into going to live music uh, because I was so busy doing my own live shows when I was in my 20s and 30s. The idea of going to someone else's show was like, no, I, I'm going to do my show. <laughs> Stupid. I think I missed a lot of things that I would I, I would have really enjoyed. Um, you're making corned beef and cabbage today. Uh, you're at the house. It smells a little cabbagey. Part of the progress, yeah, process, yeah. I get, I guess, Laura. I'm, I'm not. I'm, mm, I like some corned beef, but I can't imagine making corned beef and cabbage on my own. So good for you, um, <laughs> Jen. Don't speak for you about the anal probe. Sure, yeah. Excuse me, that's my bad. When I said we don't like it, I just meant generally humanity. But uh, of course. The aliens are looking for a few good men and women who enjoy anal probing. I don't know if these are the Anunnaki or different aliens. It's hard to know for sure with the aliens who you're dealing with. I mean, they're the ones doing the probing. Let's just put it that way. Get a little Garmin device for your bike, uh, Ed's saying. You can upload a path and it will guide you along the way. Oh, I could upload, I could, I could use the paper map to then program the Garmin. Huh. Yeah, that's a good one. Laura, you've subscribed to Socks, and you can recommend it. Oh, well, interesting. Well, I definitely... So these are the Drops laundry detergent. I'm going to give them a try. I'll let you know what I think. The Undies, Me Undies, they were sponsoring a ton of podcasts for a while, and I tried them out. I have to say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Um, me Undies are my Undies. Um <clears throat> Joan, you're on board with Jen on the anal probe. Man, we were learning so much about each other on a Friday. Um, Flavio, you're hopeless about reading maps. I know. Well, you don't even have... It's such a thing. It's such a thing of the past. Now, I, on the other hand, am pretty good at reading maps. And I used to pride myself on be able, being able to read the map and then remember the map in my head and kind of the turn-by-turn -turn directions in my head. But now that's over. And of course, the turn by turn directions on a bike are much. To go to San Diego <laughs> in a car is pretty easy. You go over there, you get on the 405, it turns into the 5 freeway, and you get off when you're in San Diego. But on a bike, there's a lot of take this and watch out for that, and then go over here to avoid that. And now you got to get a little on this for a little while, and don't be scared. So, tricky. Ah. Uh, Rich, talking about it. corned beef and cabbage sounds like a Dutch oven. Yeah, corned beef and ca cabbage. Cabbage doesn't smell good, but it's very good for you. Oh, the Bomba socks. I was given some Bomba socks, Jen, and I really enjoyed them. Um, <laughs> Jeff, you don't want anything to do with anal probes whatsoever unless there's money in it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm still out. I think I'm still out. I, I only. Do I'm all I'll only subject myself to that if it's a doctor's orders, and I have to I have to know the doctor. Alien doctors, no no way. Wow, there's a lot of links. Ed, you got the Garmin thing here. I'm ready to check that out. Um, Kevin, you're saying baby, check out the outbound for Pacific Coast bike touring. Okay, I will. Uh, I'm going to click that. So I'm opening it in another window to be able to do um, do that later on. On YouTube, the Stop Making Sense video by Talking Heads is fantastic. One and a half hours. 
We went to see that, Carl. Uh, thank you uh, for telling me that. I haven't watched it on YouTube, but uh, we went to see that. They played that movie in a theater, and then there was supposed to be a question and answer with uh, is it Jonathan Demme who directed it. Afterwards, we didn't say for that, but we we watched the movie in this theater where they they took out the seats at the bottom so you could dance, and it was uh, super fun. It was like being at a concert. Loved it. Uh, Scott, you got here late. You, you missed something. Yeah, well, you missed the talk about the anal probe, Scott. I was just saying the aliens love the anal probe, but we do not enjoy the anal probe, and that's why the alien is smiling. And then some people corrected me when I say we. That doesn't include everybody. <laughs> just suffice it to say. Um, you're in a lot of back pain today. Jen, oh, send hugs. Yes, hugs to you. Uh, I do hope you feel better. Oh my God. I've got a buddy who's uh, one of my jujitsu friends. He hasn't been back to the gym because he's in back pain. And he was talking about getting an epidural, which I, uh, oh, I, that sounds a little bit OTT, over the top, getting an epidural. Uh, but uh, I do understand back pain can be horrific. <clears throat> oh, wow. Your daughter once accidentally said her grandma. The bicycle directions instead of the automobile directions, auto directions. She was going from Louisville to Raleigh, North, to Raleigh, uh, New Hampshire. And every time she got on the highway, it told her to get off at the next exit. It took her about 50 miles to figure it out. Yeah, it sounds pretty terrible. Uh, that's the problem with these devices, these computers. They're, they're trying to help us, but uh, they don't, they're, they're dumber than we wish they were. I guess... I guess when the directions get uh, omnipresent, when it's just like you tell it you want to go to San Diego and it just takes you there, and you look out the window and you see uh, Phoenix or something like that, you're like, well, it knows best. Socks uh, you subscribe to is the Awesome Socks Club by Hank and John Green. Ooh, all the proceeds go to build a women's health hospital in Sierra Le Leone. Wow, you're really supporting some causes there with your socks, Laura. I'm very proud of you. You're getting two nerve block epidurals. Oh, and then an ablation burnout. Wow, Jen, that sounds serious. You got some major construction going down there in your saccharilliac. <clears throat> Plus the socks are super comfy and have fun designs. I believe it. Someone bought you a really sweet $600 cycling garment for Christmas although it was uh, someone doing it with your stolen credit card info. Well, Dave, did they have it shipped to your house? They tried to divert the shipping elsewhere, but the bike shop uh, uh, attended to change for exactly that reason, and you got a refund. Oh, so you didn't get to try out the cycling garment. It's a weird thing. You would think that people who are stealing your credit card would be, uh, I guess, uh, maybe I'm just demographically prejudice, but I would think people are stealing credit cards are not buying bike computers. But then again, what do I know? Man, I thought all those people you see on bikes when they wave at you when you're driving past them on the bike trails, they always seem, they always seem so nice. They don't seem like, oh, I might steal your credit card and order myself a new bike computer. Um, uh, where are we at? Oh, Jen, uh, or Laura, you're saying your roommate has done uh, the nerve ablation for her chronic pain. Hmm, it did help. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure Jen's glad to hear that. Oh, RV has its own GPS for weight and height, Keith. Lots of low bridges. I'm going to have to check into that because I don't want to... I don't think our uh, camper that goes on top of the truck is too high, but I... <laughs> But I definitely don't want to tear it off, especially on the inaugural uh, trip. <laughs> People steal credit cards by anal probe, Joan. I hadn't heard of that one. Um, but that is where I keep all my passwords. <sighs> oh, the, your credit card got stolen from a database like Amazon. The bike shop guy said it happens all the time. Wow. <laughs> wow. So not only are we getting are we getting some new information, which is your credit card info is getting stolen from Amazon, but that bike shops are a common go-to for people who've just stolen a credit card. Uh, Rich, you're saying you think you want an e-bike. You don't need a 
bike GPS. There's phone apps for that that do the same for free. Yeah, I, what I want is, though, to be able to get the directions turn by turn and understand what they are. Sometimes those phone apps that do your directions, they can ch decide to change their minds on the road. I've, I've experienced that. Or maybe I haven't. I don't know. Oh, Bob, you uh, you got to be careful about those heights. You shipped a tiny house from Illinois to New Hampshire, and it was 13 and a half feet high. Wow. You've done a lot of things, Bob. Who who knew? I, well, I guess I knew. I should know by now. But uh, I've never shipped a tiny house any, anywhere. I've watched so many videos about tiny houses, but now I'm more on the RV plan. RV is 13 feet. Um, all right, so... How about a question from the question box for this Friday happy half hour? I think that's what I'm going to do. I have to admit, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit disappointed that Lady Jerry has kind of is off the show right now. Is I no, I don't mean she's off the show. I mean she's turned away from the show for a bit. Should everyone be required to work in the service industry at some point in their lives? Now I think that this is a leading question, Your Honor. Uh, and I think that they that this is comes off of the fact that if you have worked in the service industry, of course you know that uh, it's not e it's not easy being a um, a waiter or a bartender or a busboy or a hotel maid or a receptionist, housekeeper, whatever. However, we're describing those things. Um, I don't think you have to work in those jobs to be able to be empathetic towards those people. But I do think that people should. Uh, sh people should be forced to spend a day imagining uh, walking in someone else's shoes. I think I think that that that's that's the key too. We we should imagine before you lay into somebody else for being uh, terrible at their job. You should um, you should imagine what it's like to do their job. Um, Where are we at? Dave, you're saying, so you had to stop at the CC and get a new one and enter the new one back into all of the databases so they can just back and get it again, just like catching mice in a live trap and throwing them outside. Oh, I'm not even sure what you're talking about, Dave, but it sounds like you're into, you're into some real, uh, um, oh, this is, this is the credit card. You had to get it, stop that credit card and get a new credit card and enter the one back into all of the databases so they can just go back and do it again. Yeah, well, that's the problem, isn't it? I mean, if, they're, if, they're, if they've act, access to Amazon, they can keep coming after it. We love you, Lady Jerry. Jeff, I will pass that along. Uh, thank you. Um, you worked at Taco Bell when you were in your teens. It taught you much about life. Jeff, I'm sure. <laughs> any, kind, any kind of, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that... Uh, you should be required to work in a service job, but if you learn how to wait tables, man, that's a skill and, uh, and an exercise in, in looking at the world from a different perspective that you can, you can benefit from it even if you never wait tables again. But if once you know how to wait tables, if I knew how to cut hair, um, well, I do with the Floby, but it's hard to convince other people to let you do that to them, uh, let alone pay you to do that to them. But if I knew how to cut hair... I could travel around making a, making a living. It seems like one of those jobs where you could learn how to do it, travel around wherever you wherever you wanted, and always be able to get work. Wait tables, bartending, cutting hair. <laughs> Your buddy just caught a fish and he wasn't fishing. Dave, that sounds like a setup for a, a joke. Or is that the punchline? Um, I'm not sure. You worked at a truck stop in Flagstaff in college, Jen, and you learned a lot about people <laughs> that you mostly don't like them. Yeah. Oh, man, I used to, we used to go eat at the truck stop all the time when I was in college in Ames, Iowa, which is not a big town, but uh, any town that's on the edge of an interstate, kind of in the Midwest, that have truck stops out there. We used to love to eat at the trucks. That was before you had your truck stops that were like chains, uh, like the Love's Truck Stop, which are great. I mean, I do enjoy a truck stop, but the independent truck stop where we, where we used to go out and eat at the diner, man, it was sketchy in the most delightful way. Uh, we used to love to go to the truck stop, either, either after a night of drinking or in the morning before a day of drinking. <laughs> the truck stop is good <laughs> in either of those instances. Hmm. 
Bob, you caddied when you were starting at 12 and it affected your whole life. I bet you, you learn how to relate to rich people. You also learn how to play golf, I think, when you're, when you're a caddy. And, uh, and now I think you own a golf course, don't you? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I never caddied, but uh, I, did, uh, I did some restaurant work. You worked at the Jet Propulsion Lab not long after the job at Taco Bell. <laughs> so, he liked to say you went from Taco Bell to JPL. Mm, I like it, Jeff. Uh, and that can't be a path, that can't be a well-worn path, you know. <clears throat> so, I'm going to read another question from the question box. I'm going to think about, I should have, I should have thought a little, what's your earliest memory? Oh, come on. I don't even know what my, the, the, that's the problem with being this tender age of 60, my earliest memory. I used to have a memory, you know, they say that once you go back and re-remember things that you're not actually remembering them, now you're remembering yourself remembering them and uh, they become less and less trustworthy. So I did have a, a memory when I was a little kid of getting bit by a, I told my mom it was a worm, but it was obviously a snake and there was a little pill bottle involved. but. I can't even picture that memory now. I'm only repeating to you what I know that I said in the past. Um, uh, I probably have some mem memories from my teenage years. Uh, I, I was remembering when I was a teenager and uh, my parents the other day. Um, but yeah, earliest memory, not so interesting. Rachel, you worked as a prep cook at Friendly's Restaurant in college, which is where you learned to never eat the coleslaw there. <laughs> oh, I don't even want to know about the coleslaw story, Rachel. But uh, I do enjoy some coleslaw, but I suppose coleslaw kind of hides a, a lot of vegetable sins. You know, you can throw in some sad carrots and cabbage. Your earliest memory was at the age of two and a half, Bob, an accident that landed you in the hospital and left a lifelong scar on your cheek. Wow. Wow. That's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting uh, memory. Lady Jerry had, had a horse accident when she was, uh, I think, 12, and it shattered her leg, and so she's got that as a big one. I suppose now when I think, I, I do have a memory from when I was nine or 10, and I, when I sprained my ankle, now that I'm talking about Lady Jerry's injury. But, uh, I don't know. I'm not thinking about my earliest memory. My, my, my most recent memories of today at jujitsu were pretty great. Um, there's a uh, there's one of the coaches there is used to be a, a champion college wrestler of some renown named Rico Chaparelli, and so he's been uh, teaching us some wrestling kind of takedown moves. And today's class was quite good. It's surprisingly more gentle sometimes than the um, than the jujitsu coaches are, and it's he's really just coaches coaching us on kind of connecting and then off balancing the other person and then exploiting. You get them to push, and then you, and then when when you push them, they push back, and as they push, you pull, and that's that's basically the theory of it. But anyway, it was quite a quite a fun class today with a couple of people who I hadn't seen for a while at the gym. So that's my most recently. Um, that's my most recent memory. <laughs> Jen, your earliest memories are falls. Oh, that's, that is sad. Bob, no springs. I get it. I get it. Because seasons, right? Um, ooh, this is a good one. If you could be a foreign ambassador, which country would you choose? And I have to say, I would love to be the United States foreign ambassador to New Zealand. Because then we could live there. I could be a big shot. I probably couldn't do comedy. I don't think you can do comedy if you're the ambassador. Uh, you can make jokes at the dinner table, but it would be fun to be the ambassador to New Zealand because uh, Lady Jerry's family is all there, which are my family, and I know people there, and it's a beautiful country that I love, and uh, I think it would be just a win-win all the way around. So if I could be the, you know, the ambassador to a foreign country, I think I would choose New Zealand. If I was, if that was knocked out, um, I think uh, I, I'm going with English-speaking countries. I think I, 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 
Australia would not be bad, but I think my first choice would be New Zealand, and my second choice might be um, Italy, uh, just because pff, Italy. I love the food. I love the scenery. You could swim in the ocean. You could dr have a drink of wine. You can hike in the mountains. Italy. Uh, maybe that's gonna, I, may, I may be changing that to my first choice. Don't tell Lady Jerry. Um, oh, Bob, or Dave, you, you just caught the fish and it wasn't, and you weren't fishing. You were chasing a fish hooked with a bobber on the line. Oh my God, you freed him. Well, thank goodness. Um, your old Kempo sensei would step on your lead foot and <laughs> when uh, you pulled, pulled it back, uh, it was over. Yeah. The tripping. The tripping. Uh, all right. Positano, Italy, Jeff, you're saying, yeah, I, I'm, I'm down. This is the mission of this group going forward, Bob. Uh, okay, you need to start a campaign to make you the ambassador to New Zealand. <laughs> Who here has a pipeline to Joe? Well... I'm, maybe I can ask Christella <laughs> when she's here. I think she's got a pipeline to the administration. I'd like to get appointed to ambassador to New Zealand. Let's find out who it is now. Let's find out who the current ambassador to New Zealand is. And uh, let's see if we can uh, dig up some dirt on them. <laughs> get them thrown out and uh, get me in. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good idea. Uh, well, no, I don't think it is a good idea, but, uh, I like it as a joke idea for a Friday. Uh, Ed, you're saying your friend was the ambassador to Australia under Obama. He was roommates with Obama in college. Obama used to say, stay with them until he started running for president and security became more of a problem. Wow. Wow. So I, that's the, th that's what you need to, that's, that's what you need, I think, to become the ambassador to uh, New Zealand. I think I would be good at it, but I think there's probably a line to get to be the ambassador to New Zealand. Um, <clears throat> Rich, you're saying Italy's nice, but working there sucks. Everyone argues about everything and nothing gets done. Yeah, well, I do. Uh, and that's kind of different to, to New Orleans, where nobody really argues with anyone about anything. <laughs> and then nothing ever gets done. Um, but... Uh, I'd like to think, I, in my fantasy world, uh, I feel like because of what you just said about Italy, that it operates some in a similar way to New Zealand or to New Orleans, and that it's so kind of pieced together and broken and reliant on everybody doing what they usually do anyway, uh, that it would be a fun place to be. But who knows? Jen, you're saying the, the ambassador to New Zealand is Scott Brown, a prominent political leader, attorney, and National Guardsman with a long history of public service. Oh, that is tough for me. <laughs> I guess we can just hope that he gets tired then. <laughs> That's what I'm relying on. I'm just hoping Scott gets tired of New Zealand. Maybe, maybe he gets sick of all that hobbit food. Yes, Jeff, you're right. In New Orleans, no one cares if nothing gets done because they are doing something. They're they're not, they are not, they're not. Their uh, their goals are all around having a good time and a good meal and good friends, and all and they do get that done, in a big way. And you're saying the ambassadorship to New Zealand is currently empty. Oh, Brown ended in December 2020. Oh, good. Well, this this is good news. All right. Uh, well, I don't, I don't think we should work on this over the weekend, but I can't stop you from doing something if you need to do it. Kevin, uh, you're saying Brown left in, uh, December 20th of 2020, so it's vacant now. Hmm. All right. All right. Well, we'll just have to figure out who we, who's the person we target with the emails that we need to target emailing and get started on this. Um... I don't know. I don't know when, uh, you gotta be goal. You gotta set a timely. I mean, I think that this is, uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure that this goal would be attainable to become the ambassador to New Zealand, but let me go run it by lady Jerry. Uh, she'll be excited that it was, um, 
that the position is available. Joan, you're going to have a nice weekend. Oh, you're going to start making campaign posters. Great. I don't know if it's something that you can uh, run for, but uh, Jen, you're saying I think you could just apply? Well, okay. Well, I'm applying. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> Ed, you can hook me up with your friend and you can make your case. Yeah, I love it. Okay. I like it. This is going to be great. Bobby, looking forward to my confirmation hearings. Me too, because even if I don't con get confirmed, <laughs> I promise to put on a good show at the hearings. I promise. Uh, so at least at least appoint me, and let's see if I can get confirmed. Um, all right, it's time for Seize the Day. It's Friday. I am so sorry that uh, we didn't have a special guest today. Uh, Christella hopefully will be in next week, although she's going to be in Joshua Tree hiking. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm, I'm reinvigorated with, uh, desire and energy, uh, to now pursue my new career as the United States ambassador to New Zealand. So here we go. Um, it's time for seize the day. Uh, I hope you all catch a fish, whether you're fishing or not. And, uh, I hope we all have a great weekend and now today's... <laughs> I'm done. I'm not going to read that one. Uh, okay. Here we go. Today sees the day. Bill Watterson. Watterson. Bill Watterson. I'm not sure who he's the ambassador to of what, but um, here we go. You can't just turn on creativity like a faucet. You have to be in the right mood. What mood is that? last minute minute panic. I disagree with Bill Watterson on this. You can't just turn on creativity like a faucet. I, I do sort of agree with that. You have to be in the right mood. I disagree with that. What mood is that? Last minute panic. So, um, I, I, I think you, I think you can practice creativity. I think you can sit down, you can show up at the time when you said you were going to show up to try and write your comedy sketch or your book or your novel doesn't mean that something great is going to happen that day. But if you keep doing that every day, then, um, it is going to work. It is going to work. And so you can, you can turn on the faucet. Um, you're not sure that something's going to come out, but if you keep turning on that faucet, eventually something is going to come out creatively. That's my personal experience. This is the kind of, uh, a motivational, uplifting talk that I'm going to be able to provide the people of New Zealand when I'm their uh, United States ambassador. Also, I love the food down there. So I'm the kind of person, when I'm the ambassador, when you have a big dinner, I'm eating everything. And I'm loving it. I already like pavlova. I know what it is. Uh, I'm, I, I believe that the New Zealanders invented it. There's a big kind of controversy about whether it was New Zealand or Australia. And uh, I think that I'm going to push for the U.S. government to acknowledge that uh, Pavlova was invented by uh, the Kiwis. So uh, that's just a, that's just a, the beginning of the list of my platform to get this job. Everybody have a great weekend. Nice to hang out with everybody, Jeff, as you say. Um, Bill Watterson wrote Calvin and Hobbes. Well, I disagree with him on his creativity, but then again, he was a guy who was showing up every day for work and turning on the faucet. So, ah, ah. but I'm glad that you helped me out. Pavlova is amazing, Laura. You're right. Uh, good night, everybody. Uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I think that's one of the great things that this crew is doing is we all take care of each other. Jen, I hope your back feels better. Don't anybody give up. There'll be plenty of time to give up later. We'll be back together next week uh, for a good time. Motivational Monday. Have a great weekend.